Hello, Startup Vision. My name is Elodie Geddon, and I'm a professor of epidemiology and of biology at New York University. Hello, Elodie. Thank you for being with us uh, uh, and uh, for doing this interview. Uh, you have been working on viruses for a very, very long time. Can you tell us uh, about it. And the first question I want to ask, you know, is what is a virus and more specifically, what is a coronavirus? Uh, so that's a good question, Florence. Uh, viruses is a, a, a very large group of microbes. They're not bacteria, so you can't treat them with um, microbial, you know, antibiotics. You have to treat them with either antivirals or nothing. Right. So the family of coronaviruses are uh, slightly different types of viruses compared to influenza. So I do a lot of research on influenza and I do research on how the virus is transmitted and how the virus evolves every season. And I'm also interested in new emerging influenza viruses. And we've all heard of the avian influenza. And we've often thought that the next pandemic would be an influenza virus. Uh, but in fact, a few years ago, I don't know if you remember, in 2002, there was the SARS pandemic. And it, you know, we realized that the coronaviruses which is a different virus than influenza, but it's a, a virus that you find a lot in bats. So bats are actually an animal that carries a lot of different viruses and they carry the corona viruses. And the name corona incidentally comes from crown. And it's because when you look at the virus, they're actually a pretty virus. They seem to have like a crown uh, uh, around them. And that's why they're called corona. And every season when it's flu season and even cold season, when you have these flu-like symptoms, it's possible that you carry a human coronaviruses uh, virus. There are four different coronaviruses that we can have any season during the winter mostly. Some can come in the in the summer also. And and then there are these coronaviruses that we hear about today with the new pandemic, and that's the SARS-CoV-2 virus, and it's sars coronavirus 2 And you sometimes they call it the, the COVID-19 also. It's the same. Yes. No, it's and not the same. So, the, uh, so here's the difference. So SARS-CoV-2 is the actual yeah. virus, and COVID-19 is the disease. And it's really okay. confusing, and I'll tell you why it has a different name than SARS. So in 2002, 2003, when there was that SARS epidemic that occurred, mm -hmm. the word SARS stands for uh, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. That's the SARS, right? And so at the time, people who got infected with SARS would develop an acute respiratory syndrome. And that's why the virus called SARS-CoV also has the disease called SARS. But in our case, the SARS-CoV-2 is related genetically to that first SARS, but disease-wise is quite different. Only a small proportion of individuals who get infected develop an actual SARS disease, which is severe acute respiratory syndrome. So instead, it was named COVID-19 for coronavirus infectious disease. And, uh, and it just it covers everything, whether it's a mild disease or a more severe disease. So how is this one different from other coronavirus? What is the difference? Well, so the difference is that first, it seems to be far more transmittable. So the, the SARS from 2002 and even MERS from a few years ago, four or five years ago, which is also a coronavirus, uh, did not transmit as much human to human as we see with the current coronavirus. Now, all three of the you know, SARS-CoV, MERS, and SARS-CoV-2 
are um, zoonotic transmissions. That means they came directly from an animal into the human population. So if you compare them to the human coronaviruses, we, you know, we're not sure where those original human coronaviruses come from. They may have had a, a similar history where they came directly from an animal, but have adapted to the human population and caused these very mild diseases now. So there is that similarity of the current uh, coronavirus that would have come from uh, um, animal infections, like a, di a, di a direct animal infection. And that, how does the transmission operate between bats, then an animal, then to human? How do you explain that? It's very complicated for us to understand, especially if it comes from an exotic animal or something like that. Yeah, no, it's a very good question. Now it's, you know, it's unclear exactly how this current one transmitted, but we've seen in the past that um, the, you know, bats tend to live in areas where humans are also. So they live you know, in ceilings, in houses, or in barns, for example. But they also live in forests that are uh, where small mammals also live, mm. and where in some parts of the world, they do a lot of uh, bushmeat hunting or hunting of these small mammals for consumption. And in these wet markets in China, okay. for example, they go collect these animals, bring them to the market, and it's possible that these animals are like the, the vector. They may not be the reservoir, and I don't know if you know the difference between a reservoir explain, and a Explain, explain, explain. Yeah, so, so a reservoir is where the virus would actually be in its home, and the home would be the bats. And it's mostly in the bat gut. And so the bats would have droppings that would fall you know, in the forest and could fall on these small mammals. And the small mammals could get infected or could even be carrying the viruses. So that when you hunt the mammal and you bring it, these small animals, you bring them to a market, you can basically bring the infected animal or with the, the virus particles that then can infect humans. But this, even this transmission from an animal to humans doesn't happen all that often. I mean, it can happen where you'll be exposed but you may, you know, one person may be sick, but the virus may not, you know, replicate very well in a human. So that there are many instances of these, you know, zoonotic transmissions that happen that lead nowhere. They're dead ends. So that the, the individual who gets infected is considered what we call a dead end host. That means it doesn't go anywhere else. It's them and it, it doesn't go further. Thank, thank God, because, you yeah. know, we would be infected all the time. And do you think we should ban those livestock uh, farmers market? Uh, yes. In, in so farmers market? It's been, there's been a lot of controversy on that. So it is thought that these wet markets in China are really a source of dangerous uh, emerging infections. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's thought that, yes, they should be banned mostly, especially if they're in these really dense population uh, dense areas. Uh, where there are a lot of individuals who can be in contact with, you know, blood and raw meat. Uh, and so these, uh, the, the viruses are still very much present in these meats. So it can be, uh, it can be dangerous. And um, why and how these new viruses that we had in the last, let's say, 30 years, you know, like HIV, like you said, SARS, Ebola, uh, H1N1, now the right. coronavirus. Why so quickly and why so spread out? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a change. Unless we were exposed to that before and we're dying, we didn't know. But it seems to us, you know, that we're like struck by all those uh, new viruses. Uh, well, it's a combination of both, actually. So it's uh, both that we probably, in decades past, in, you know, many years ago, we would die of diseases and we didn't know, you know, we didn't know what people died of, right? So there was a very limited knowledge on infectious diseases. That's one. 
But in the modern era, we're much more aware of when we have these new outbreaks that occur, and the field of epidemiology is, is pretty well advanced so that uh, we do pick up when you have a new emerging infection. And you're correct that we are seeing more emerging infections more, uh, more recently or in the last few decades. Uh, and one of the reasons is due to urban sprawl, because there is far more now contact between humans and wildlife because we're spreading into areas of the world that used to be very dense and um, unpopulated. Uh, so deforestation is probably contributing to this a lot. Uh, and uh, higher density of population, having an increased population size, global world population is increasing and people have to find protein to feed themselves. So I think these are all contributions to, to the problem and to, uh, to this jump of wild, um, uh, viruses of wildlife into the human population. Elodie, thank you so much for those explanations and uh, we'll uh, get back to you in a new video. So please tune to Startup Vision TV and uh, we'll have some more explanation with Elodie Gavin. Thank you so much, Elodie. You're welcome.